Hello friends, today we begin a new series that is uh, seven types of ambiguity. New series of lectures, of course. And uh, complete and the uh, uh, name of the title is uh, A Study of Its Effects on English Verse. Seven types of ambiguity, a study of its effects on English English words. Understand? First published in 1930, uh, revised in 1947, and one more revision 1953. So, two revisions. Well, first, let's see. This is, it is said that this is one of the foundations of the school of literary theory known as New Criticism. Listen, New Criticism. There are other texts, for example, foundations you can see. I research the principles of literary criticism. Now, one thing that we must remember, we start to start with what is meant by ambiguity. A simple example. Foot of the hill. Foot of the hill. Now, foot, what is the meaning of foot? You know, <laughs> I may not tell you what is the meaning of foot. The literal meaning is your foot. Foot of the hill means then it has a different meaning. That is, the, the lowest part of the hill. Isn't it? Foot of the hill. Yes, the lowest part of the hill. Right? So this is already ambiguous. Already another, another example will give. Uh, let's see. For the starting point of the Hill, you can say, foot of the hill. Okay. Criminal lawyer. Criminal lawyer. What do you understand by this? Criminal lawyer. Ambiguity again. Very, what you should say, tough ambiguity. Who is, because this is, it could be misunderstood. Who is lawyer? Who is criminal here? Is the lawyer is criminal? Or? Is he a lawyer who is pleading cases for criminals, criminal cases? He takes up only criminal cases. So you say he is criminal lawyer, civil lawyer. Same says civil lawyer. So this is ambiguity. If any word or a phrase or a sentence suggests one plus meaning, see that? It can be two, three, four, five, six. See, there is another sentence I give. They are playing cards. They are playing cards. Now, what does it mean? Some people are sitting and playing cards. Or this packet, this packet of cards, they are playing cards. Okay. So they are playing, they, they, they are playing cards. Some people. They are playing cards. Here, if you shift the stress, it can be somehow you can clear the ambiguity. But here, criminal lawyer, criminal lawyer. No scope. <laughs> you cannot. So that is this is ambiguity. Simple thing. So if you if you find that the word or a a phrase or a sentence suggests one plus meaning or more than one meaning, then that you got it is an ambiguous situation or an ambiguous structure. Understand? All right. Now, what is in this case? You say it is not. Uh, Emerson does not use this as a negative uh, quality of the. Uh, negative quality of words, but of words, but it enhances the reader's understanding of the poem by isolating and separating the linguistic properties of the text. 
understand. Here also you do the same, it enhances your understanding. Here you have got this uh, phrase and so on, this prose. But mainly it is aimed at enriching, to enjoy, enrich the enjoyment of poetry. If you know the ambiguities or the different meanings suggested by a line or a stanza or a poem as a whole or a word, then what happens is you feel after reading that or after going through all the meanings you say, oh, this is oh, this is something solid, something great. Understand? Example. Beauty is a beauty is but a flower which wrinkles will devour. Two lines. Beauty is beauty is but a flower which wrinkles will devour. Devour. Which wrinkles will Devour. Now what is the meaning? Wrinkles. Here we have the wrinkles. What is meant by wrinkles? Simple meaning is touches of time or time said times touch marks you can say. Times touch marks. When we grow old, you can see wrinkles on my face. Old man. <laughs> you can see. That is marks touched by time. That's one. So what is the next one? Wrinkles say like the caterpillars on pet on petals. The wrinkles they look like caterpillars on petals. Caterpillars, you know, on petals. And then worms that have to grow in the grave. Well, worms like this. So when, you are, when I am buried after some time, <laughs> what will happen is worms will come and start devouring. So they are wrinkles on my face, wrinkles in the grave. Thus you have got meanings, different meanings. So once you have this, you know this meanings, what will happen? The, the enjoyment of these lines will definitely you are this ambiguity is resolved, then enjoyment enhances. Isn't it? Beauty is but a flower which wrinkles will devour. Now this happens very often in in uh, poetry, poetic language, not not normally in prose. So, so conversion, it's a conversion. Isn't it? You have, for example, in King Lear there is a phrase, ripeness is all. Ripeness is all. Ripeness is all. What do you mean by ripeness is all? This an ambiguous phrase, ripeness is all. Now what could, what could be the meaning of that in context? It's maturity is all. Maturity. And if you are a mature person, that means that's the most important thing. It includes everything. Maturity, ripeness. Then, another meaning could be a process, you know, a process of growing up. And the last point. The last point of growing up, that is, ripeness is all. Or, ripeness is all, means, what is, what is important is, when you are ripe, what will happen is, the ripe fruit that will be plucked. So, it is normal that when you grow old, you die. Ripeness is all. Or, can be applied to anyone. That, that is, in the process of growth, one should reach a point where 
you have knowledge about life. Wisdom. Lightness is always wisdom. Wisdom is everything. Attainment of wisdom is everything in life. Ripeness is so. so how many meanings? Otherwise, if we say, ripeness is so. Uh, ripeness is so. That's so. We agree with you. <laughs> so, we agree with you that ripeness is so. See, this is how you are ambiguity when resolved, it enhances your enjoyment of right. Understand? So, famous one to be or not to be. I need not tell you, we can have a substituted by how many? Uh, hundreds of options. No. Uh, you can say indefinitely, indefinitely variable options you can you can replace those two, those two are to be or not to be, you can replace by indefinitely variable options. To kill or not to kill, to drink or not to drink, to go or not to go, to write or not to write. Oh, I'm being this. So, what happened? Just now you see, when you go through, when, you, when we were going through these three pieces, what happens is our enjoyment of poetry it is increasing or enhances that the best way. Enhances. Understand? So what do you find is words or reference in poem, references in poems are very often ambiguous. That is a characteristic of great poetry. That is a characteristic of characteristic of great poetry. Listen. Then what happens is that when they carry multiple meanings in poetry, lines and the words, they carry multiple meanings. And then multiple meanings are understood by the reader. It enhances the appreciation of poetry. Listen. So you have got cognitive and the tonal meanings. Even rhythm. Not even rhythm, but rhythm also. Basis of readers' emotional response. So when you say, this is the verse, beauty is but, but a flower which wrinkles will devour. But the tone, it is a tone of pessimism. Or it is a turn, a sense of cruelty is there. Or there is what we find a situation where you are helpless. After all, what is it? Helen, what is it? You will also be devoured by worms in the grave. Just as I will be or you will be. So tonal meanings are also there. That they can also create uh, ambiguity. And at the same time, enrich your appreciation. Multiple meanings, strong meanings, rhythm. Listen. Cognitive. Cognitive means what we have been now, uh, I was just telling that is the different meanings. See? Seven types of ambiguity is in fact an extended examination through logical analysis. Did you get it? It is an extended examination through logical analysis. Extended examination through logical analysis. Through logical analysis. This is actually uh, when you are trying to seven types of Ambiguity, Emerson. And Emerson himself has said, it is the belief that reason can be applied to the arts, not only really emotion. Remember, cognitive structures and rational progression, two phrases used by, we have two great critics. Wimsett and Beardsley. Send it. 
So it is a revelation that the seven types of ambiguity, resolving these ambiguities, is a revelation and reason can be applied to the art. Understand? It is as old as criticism and fundamental to it. When you apply your reason to art, what do you find is you automatically, logically analyze it. When you logically analyze it, you have greater cognitive benefit. And when you have greater cognitive benefit, your enjoyment will be enhanced. So seven types of ambiguity, the trust is that the focus is on that. Understand? So the method of verbal analysis, see, is the main point of this, of this book. Verbal analysis, how the different methods Verbal analysis, analysis, or reason, applying reason to art, reason to art, we are saying, verbal analysis, and then logical, logical analysis, and it becomes, you enhance, these are the key words here, enhance your enjoyment, understand? Actually, what happened is that there are some triggers. You can say there are two triggers. Triggers means something that prompted Emerson to do this work. Of course, this is a great work, no doubt about that. Every student of literature must go through this book, text. Listen. First is T.S. Eliot's re-evaluation of metaphysical poetry, implying implying or questioning the value of the 19th century poet. First trigger, trigger is a problem. Two things that prompted right now. So one is T.S. Eliot's, T.S. Eliot's re-evaluation of the metaphysical Metaphysical poets implying so that implies what? It implies that the, a questioning. It implies a questioning. Questioning of what? The value of 19th century poetry. Uh, metaphysical poets implying implying what? In another way, we can say, saying that the 19th century poetry is not as great as the metaphysical poet. Implying a question. A question. Implying questioning of 19th century. 19th century poetry. So it's an association and dissociation of sensibility setting. Says metaphysical, they say, T.S. Eliot say, a dissociation of sensibility set in, in 19th century. He praises the metaphysicals. See that? That's one thing. Secondly, Freud. Freud. Freud's, Freud's conflicts in the unconscious. Impact of Freud's the issue of unconscious conflict. Unconscious, unconscious conflict. Because unconscious conflict, because the poet, see for example, exploration of the conflict within the other. Exploration of a conflict within the other. This implied that after this idea of unconscious conf conflict, it has been, it has been uh, said, almost accepted, there is an unconscious conflict going on in the mind of the poet. So, as a result of this ambiguities, 
So it is actually exploration of the conflict that was going on in the unconscious of the poet. So it has two aspects or two triggers. One is TSLE and the other is the unconscious conflict of. One is TSLE's re-evaluation of metaphysical poetry implying or suggesting that 19th century poetry was not as good as that of the metaphysicals. The second one is Freud's, Freud's suggestion or his theory that is the unconscious conflict the, the creative, creative, creativity is, you can say creativity, or a writing poem, or a drama, etc., is the result of an unconscious conflict that was going on within the poet, mind of the poet. So if you explore that, you will get the more meanings. And then what will happen again, the final aim is enhancement of pleasure. So the aim to identify and identify the right meanings, not just to say this is the right meaning. That is not the aim of Williamson. What he is trying to say is that there are these are the meanings simultaneously. Understand? But he said exploring the Exploring the expanding possibilities of what we say, alternate and multiple and simultaneous meanings. So you have got alternate, multiple, alternate, multiple and simultaneous, simultaneous meanings. Understand? This is seven types of ambiguity meanings. To explore because as Freud has said, it is the result of a uh, an unconscious conflict, a conflict that is going on at the level of the unconscious. And so, if you explore it, exploring the possibilities of alternate alternate multiple simultaneous meanings understand this is ambiguity seven types of ambiguity seven types of ambiguity i shall give you another example of simultaneous meanings see a sentence like this have you stopped beating your children have you have you Stopped beating your children. Suppose you have got a sentence like this. Now, what are the implications? Well, suggestion one it is his habit. It has been his habit beating his own children. Two, he is a teacher, and the teacher's habit is to beat students, the children, his students. Three, he started beating the children at 10 a.m. and still continues, say 11 a.m. 11 a.m. When the speaker asked this question, he has stopped. So how you stop beating the children? The children are crying, they are sitting and crying. Understand? It's a habit, his own children, school children, he's a teacher, is a father, a parent, and then again implication, he has got power over them. Another implication, they are helpless. Another implication, he is a cruel man. Another implication, there are no civil authorities to check him. So that is alternate multiple simultaneous meanings. So, exploration and expansion. Exploring and expanding multiple 
simultaneous multiple so exploring and expanding what multiple all right simultaneous and alternate meanings alternate multiple simultaneous meanings already i have given you an example so this is the enriching power of ambiguity so today we can say our title for this is enriching this is an introduction enriching power of power of ambiguity i think i have made this clear what is meant by ambiguity and uh, what is it all about the most enjoyable and influential offshoot of higher research experiments with the practical criticism what seven types of ambiguity it is the most enjoyable and influential offspring of higher research experiments with practical criticism so this is the we can say the the fertile ground from which this plant grew that is seven types of ambiguity now when i made this last sentence you know, this plant grew etc again ambiguous fertile ground ambiguous so that because fertile means many other things also so in other words to be very frank with you you cannot as well the the russian shaklovsky has said no languages neutral no language can be neutral language cannot be neutral it is always loaded seven types of ambiguity you did not mention that but that's the meaning the language you can use only language with a loaded meaning you take any word for that man any word means not frank as a words like a, see what we call you know grammatical words like to even that when he this address to certain verbs you know to has how many meanings to has or at and so on you will find so in language what do you find in every language what do you find is whatever you say is loaded with the meanings to dismantle that to explore that to find out all the alternate multiple simultaneous meanings there is a great adventure and very enjoyable adventure for that matter and that is seven types of ambiguity a study of its effects on english words understand this is an introduction i just tried to define what ambiguity is give you give you a few examples words phrases sentences lines from poetry see then a day to day uh, a piece of conversation a friend is asking his friend or a teacher how he stopped beating uh, the policemen were asked to stop drinking by midnight the policemen were asked to stop drinking by midnight who should stop drinking the policemen were asked to stop drinking by midnight hurry up please it's time by the very specially by how i say hope that the concept is clear to you now it it's easy that we can build on this so till we meet again bye have a nice day enjoy it